Greetings fellow truth seekers. This is an Aiken Block video production. Herein we expose errors taught by the institutional churches, most of which use corrupt Bibles. All scriptures are quoted from the 1611 Authorized King James Bible, first printing off the press in 1611 and approved by King James and the Translation Committee. Enjoy. Daniel's Fourth Kingdom and Antichrist I'll be reading from Romanism and the Reformation by H. Grattan Guinness. H. Grattan Guinness was a 19th century preacher and theologian, and he wrote extensively on Romanism and its effect on the Protestant Reformation. In his book Romanism and the Reformation, I'm going to be reading chapter 5, titled Interpretation and Use of These Prophecies in Pre-Reformation Times. I'll start my reading on page 83. With many varieties as to detail, we find there have existed, and still exist, two great opposite schools of interpretation, the papal and the Protestant, or the futurist and the historical. The latter regards the prophecies of Daniel, Paul, and John as fully and faithfully setting forth the entire course of Christian history. The former as dealing chiefly with a future fragment of time at its close. The former or futurist system of interpreting the prophecies is now held, strange to say, by many Protestants. But it was first invented by the Jesuit Ribera at the end of the 16th century to relieve the papacy from the terrible stigma cast upon it by the Protestant interpretation. This interpretation was so evidently the true and intended one that the adherents of the papacy felt its edge must at any cost be turned or blunted. If the papacy were the predicted Antichrist as Protestants asserted, there was an end of the question, and separation from it became an imperative duty. There were only two alternatives. If the Antichrist were not a present power, he must be either past or a future one. Some writers asserted that the predictions pointed back to Nero. This did not take into account the obvious fact that the anti-Christian power predicted was to succeed the fall of the Caesars and develop among the Gothic nations. The other alternative became therefore the popular one with papists. Antichrist was future, so Ribera and Bosuet and others taught. An individual man was intended, not a dynasty. The duration of his power would not be for twelve and a half centuries, but only three and a half years. He would be an open foe to Christ, not a false friend. He would be a Jew and sit in the Jewish temple. Speculation about the future took the place of study of the past and present, and careful comparison of the facts of history with the predictions of prophecy. This related, so it was asserted, not to the main course of the history of the Church, but only to the few closing years of her history. The papal head of the Church of Rome was not the power delineated by Daniel and St. John, accurately as it answered to the description. It was not the criminal indicated. It must be allowed to go free, and the detective must look out for another man, who was sure to turn up by and by. The historic interpretation was of course rejected with intense and bitter scorn by the church it denounced as Babylon, and the power it branded as Antichrist, and it's still opposed by all who in any way uphold these. It is held by many that the historic school or interpretation is represented only by a small modern section of the church. We shall show that it has existed from the beginning and includes the larger part of the greatest and best teachers of the church for 1800 years. We shall show that the fathers of the church belonged to it that the most learned medieval commentators belonged to it, 
that the confessors, reformers, martyrs belonged to it, and that it has included a vast multitude of erudite expositors of later times. We shall show that all these have held to the central truth, that prophecy faithfully mirrors the Church's history as a whole, and not merely a commencing or foreclosing fragment of that history. It is held by many that the Futurist school of interpretation is represented chiefly by certain Protestant commentators and teachers who deny that the prophecy of the man of sin relates to the Pope of Rome. We shall show that the Futurist school of interpretation, on the contrary, is chiefly represented by teachers belonging to the Church of Rome, that the popes, cardinals, bishops, and priests of that apostate church are all futurists, and that the futurist interpretation is one of the chief pillars of Romanism. Two interpretations of prophecy are before us, the historic and the futurist. The historical school of interpretation regards these prophecies as reflecting the history of the fourth or Roman Empire in all its most important aspects, from first to last, including especially the dark apostasy which long prevailed in Christendom, the testimony and sufferings of God's faithful people amid this apostasy and the ultimate triumph of their cause. On the other hand, the Futurist school of interpretation regards these prophecies as dealing almost exclusively with the distant future of the consummation, regards them as dealing chiefly not with what has been for the last 1800 years, but with what will be in some final spasm at the close. The war against the saints waged by the Roman little horn of the prophecies of Daniel, the proud usurpations of the man of sin, and his antagonism to the cause of true religion, foretold by Paul, the blasphemous pretensions and persecuting deeds of the revived head of the Roman Empire, set forth in the prophecies of John, all these are regarded by this futurist school as relating to a brief future period, immediately preceding the Second Advent. The futurist school denies the application of these important practical prophecies to the conflicts of the Church during the last 18 centuries. It robs the Church of their practical guidance all through that period. This is the position taken by the Church of Rome. This is the position taken by the popes, cardinals, archbishops, bishops, and other great teachers of that apostate Church. This is the prophetic interpretation they have embodied in a thousand forms and insisted upon with dogmatic authority. This has been the interpretation of proud papal usurpers, of cruel persecutors, of merciless tyrants of the Romanist enemies of the gospel and of the saints and servants of God. Thank you for watching. This has been an Aiken Block video production. We trust the information has been helpful. God bless.